All right, and good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us on Train World TV. And uh, sorry, I just had to mute everyone, get everyone going. But uh, welcome to Train World TV. This is the finale, final day of the York Virtual Train Show, and it is none whatsoever better than the Manufacturer Day. And the reason why the Manufacturer Day is so great is because we get to see the brand new items, everything that is hot coming out in O and S scale. So it is going to be quite a lineup. Uh, to start, we have Lionel, Ryan Kunkel. How you doing, Ryan? Doing well. Thanks for having us here tonight, Ken. Looking forward to it. Always good to see you, Ryan. And uh, we also have, uh, I, I guess it's uh, bittersweet, but uh, Rich and Andy Edelman and possibly the last York. Well, let's don't jump to conclusions yet, Kenny. <laughs> you know how much I love attending that show. Yeah, it's the greatest in the world, man. <laughs> I mean, we got to be there, right? That's it. Sounds sounds good. So I we're we're excited to have you. I know everybody out there probably has a bunch of questions for you, but Can, I I think it's uh, great to have you guys on. And let, let us let us know when we can uh, uh, plug our GoFundMe page. <laughs> you got it. We we may do that towards the end of the night. You never know. <laughs> All right, and. Uh, Around the horn, we have Angela Trotta Thomas. How you doing, Angela? All right, let me unmute mute you first. Hold on. Hey, Angela. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Sorry, oh. I had to unmute you. That's great. I'm do I'm doing fine. I'm happy to be here. All right, great. Great to see you. And uh, Larry Harrington of Bachman Trains. How you doing, Larry? doing all right I, I think you are I'm doing great how you guys doing doing good Larry always good yeah to I see unmuted you. I think you unmuted. all right and uh last but not least Jarrett from Atlas O scale trains or Atlas in general how you doing how you doing tonight Kenny happy to be here good to see everybody all right good to see everybody so uh, again, York is a great show, mostly known for the O and S scale products. Uh, just huge. Everybody knows it. Everybody goes there. They want to see what's new, what's hot, the greatest deals. Uh, so a lot of excitement. And unfortunately, with this COVID scenario, everybody has to change and do stuff, stuff different. And fortunately, we have the virtual now uh facebook youtube everything's going social media so we're trying to bring this to your homes and not sure if any maybe we should go around and talk about how covid uh has changed our business and if production is up and um maybe we'll go around and uh, kick it off with uh, lionel to start uh thanks ken uh well COVID hasn't impacted us at all. I mean, uh, I'm sitting here from home like I normally would uh, all the time yeah, anyway. Yeah. So we're, it's, it's been a major impact on, uh, on, our, on our business as we conduct business this year. The, the good news, I, I think, I hope I speak for everybody else uh, on this call uh, tonight, is that uh, from a, a financial side of things, from an actual doing business side of things, it's, it has not had as, as negative an impact on us as a business, as it has certainly on a lot of others uh, around there, uh, um, you know, the model train business being what it is, uh, I think we we cater to a lot of people who, frankly, are used to spending a lot of time inside uh, and away from from other people doing things on their own. So um, that that's been a good thing for us. Our sales have been pretty consistent with what we've seen over the past couple of years. From a production standpoint definitely presents a, a host of challenges. We all lost some time at the beginning of the year. There are still some struggles worldwide uh, that probably don't get as much attention in the press here as they should, uh, but there are still issues abroad uh, that still play in on some things. So we still even at this point look at the rest of our production schedule for the year with a, a little bit of an eye of caution as to, to what may happen. Uh, but overall, it looks like we've gotten through 
the worst of things. And we're looking forward to finishing the uh, 2020 year strong and then getting the heck out of it and into better things to come in 2021. Very good. And what about you guys, uh, Rich and Andy? Well, definitely a strange year, 2020 for MTH for sure. Um, but no, it, uh, uh, I agree with Ryan. I don't think it's had uh, as bad an impact on the uh, model railroading industry as it has in other areas. So it, uh, I, I for one am looking forward to 2020 being in the rear view mirror as well. So. <laughs> I'm a little more pessimistic than Rich because he doesn't go out. He just stays at home. So he's not bored uh, or he is bored. That's the way he lives. Uh, so hopefully 2021 uh, does in fact pick up. We are a little behind in production on some of our other product lines. Uh, S-Gage in particular, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but uh, all of, all said and done, I mean, we've got, you know, deliveries are Seasonal stuff has all come in, and uh, you know, so that's been a good thing from that perspective. Uh, generally, we're uh, we're running behind on that, so not so much this year. So that's good. It it could be better, but it's 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 getting along. Yeah. Hopefully, shows come back. That's that's really yeah. the big the big question there. The, these are great the way you're doing this, Kenny. I think this is our third virtual show now. The you work in the spring and uh, uh, NMRA, and now this. Um, but uh, they're, they're no replacement for a face-to-face -face contact with folks. So we're looking forward to that. And, and I will say, this is to your credit, Andy, because during COVID, you, you, you told me, you were like, we should just be all on together at once. Don't, don't give them a big head. Come on. <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely correct, Kenny. And uh, it was my idea, and I do take full credit for it. And um, I think, you know, trading some some war stories would actually be a little bit more entertaining. Uh, and I'm all up for that uh, show stories. Uh, well, there's some I can't talk about, but for the most part, that would be fun. All right. And Angela, has COVID uh, changed, I guess, your, your painting and murals, or is it kind of business as usual? Well, I've always worked at home by myself in my studio, so that hasn't changed at all. Um, the things that I miss the most are being at the shows and uh, both both with the train shows and, and also with the galleries. You know, most of the galleries are, if they're not closed, they're not doing any of the um, the events that they used to plan and uh, the same as the York and um, the train shows. So that's the part that I miss the most. Um, I have been lucky enough to be very busy with uh, a lot of work and commission work. So I stayed busy, but I do miss getting out and, and talking to people. That's great. And uh, how about you, Larry? You, uh, Larry, you got to unmute first. Okay. I thought you were unmuting, so it's fine. Um, no, <laughs> it really hasn't. I mean, it, it sort of it disrupted our business initially. We all had to adjust to work from home. Um, we, you know, we didn't get some shipments out at the early part of COVID, but once we were allowed to go back into the office, we, you know, got our back orders out and, and whatnot. I think uh, the demand has pretty much been consistent or maybe even upticked a little bit because people have more free time. They're not um, spending as much time traveling and out and dining out and stuff like that. So they have a little more, if they, you know, if they kept, they we're fortunate to keep their jobs and their income, they're spending it on trains, I believe. So. Um, you know, the biggest issue was just setting up a research and development shop at my house. And other than that, it's been okay. So. Yeah. yeah. Well said. And how about you, uh, Jared? What are you seeing at Atlas? Yeah. So, um, yeah, 2020, definitely strangest year of my life, of everybody's lives. I mean, lots of, you know, headwinds, but... What I would say is that, uh, you know, the saying goes, there's always a, a bull market somewhere. And I really feel like in the model train industry, you know, it's a bull market right now, at least for Atlas. Um, you know, a lot of people um, you know, staying home, working on their layouts, working on their trains, you know, scratch building. Um, but uh, yeah, well, we've, we've reduced, you know, density at Atlas. Um, so there's not, you know, quite the amount of staff that was here. But, um, you know, we still, you know, have a, uh, you know, full R and D department, um, you know, customer service warehouse. Uh, it's just, you know, reduced now, you know, to, um, 
you know, down to a density where, uh, you know, we all, you know, we all feel safe, uh, you know, working here. And um, yeah, we're just looking forward to 2021, looking forward to the future and looking forward to bringing out more, you know, model train products to the customers just over the next, uh, over the next year. And um, yeah, just happy to be here tonight. Well said. Yeah, I, I agree with everyone. I think uh, it, it was definitely difficult in the beginning with the shutdowns. But uh, as time went on, th the demand is there. People are playing with their trains. It's a great hobby. And I think uh, because people have to stay home now, they, they need a hobby. And it's brought in a lot of new customers into the hobby. So hopefully events like these with Virtual York, even though it won't replace a, a physical train show like Andy uh, mentioned, it should and hopefully attract some new people who may not have went to a train show or who've never, you know, seen a, a manufacturer or uh, heard about Lionel or heard about uh, MTH or Atlas uh, Williams and Angela Trotta Thomas. So, you know, hopefully these shows bring a way for everyone to learn more about the train industry. And uh, what better way to kick it off than uh, Lionel Ryan Kunkel He's going to show off some new product, uh, maybe some new announcements, just kind of all the good stuff you're accustomed to seeing at some of these train shows like York. So kick it off, Ryan. Thanks again, Ken. Uh, let's uh, take a look. I'm going to try and share the screen here so you don't have to, to just stare at me and listen to me talk. Uh, I noticed in your intro there, great job on the intro. I seem to have gotten a lot more gray <laughs> Uh, and a lot more round in the face uh, since we started doing these things. So that's that's a little bit of alarming. But, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Video magic, Ron. <laughs> All right. Is that coming through for you? Probably not. It is not. Let me exit out and I'm going to try it again. Yeah, let's try that one more time. Share. You haven't even started talking and everyone's asking about a Strasburg. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's, that's, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in a little bit. I, I hope. If we can get past these technical difficulties. All right. Should be right. seeing, seeing this here, right? You got it. Okay. Don't worry. Everybody timed it and it cut into your 15 minutes. <laughs> well, that, 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 that'll be that'll be for sure. I uh, I, I know it's um, we're going to try and try and keep things going. There's some other uh, forum tonight with a couple of uh, old guys talking at each other that I think people may want to turn into later. So um, <laughs> have your mute button ready, Ken, and just cut me off when when we get there. The uh, we're here in the middle of October. It's getting to that point. So I figured what better place to start than with uh, Halloween. We've got a lot of Halloween accessories uh, in stock and in the warehouse right now uh, or on their way to you or already uh, at stores like, like Train World, uh, Ken. So I'm sure you're seeing some good Halloween sales. The uh, Lion Chief Plus 2.0 Burks arrived a few weeks back, maybe about a month or so ago now. Uh, real popular, uh, some great sounds in these, especially the Halloween locomotive. So if you haven't had a chance to try out the new LC Plus 2.0 technology yet, uh, which now will run on TMCC, uh, Bluetooth, conventional control, uh, lots of enhanced sounds and, and features in there. Uh, this is a great one to, to start with. Uh, of course, we've got the Halloween version and several others uh, there as well. A lot of Halloween accessories, some of which have come in uh, over the last couple of uh, weeks or months, should be out there. Uh, everything you need to tune up your layout for the Halloween uh, season. Uh, Eric Siegel just did a great review of our haunted house um, on his uh, Eric's Trains podcast not too long ago. So go and check that out. It's a really fun accessory. The uh, the smoking reefers for the, the scale guys, those should be uh, coming in later this week uh, and on their way out to everybody. So uh, some really fun Halloween items. It's been a growing product line for us over the last couple of years, and we're happy to see this, this continue to to, to grow. Seems like a good excuse to get the trains out a little bit early uh, instead of just setting them up at Christmas time. You can get them out another month ahead and set up for Halloween and then transition over to Christmas. And this Which, is O-Scale, Ryan, correct? Yes. Everything you've seen there was O-Scale. Gotcha. 
Uh, and then I I, uh, I asked Siri this today, and she said it's only 64 shopping days left till Christmas. Uh, that that's scary, uh, but um, the year is is finally starting to move by a little bit faster, I guess. Uh, we've got a lot of Christmas in stock right now and ready to go uh, for American Flyer fans. Uh, just on Tuesday, we unloaded a container with the Christmas box cars, uh, the latest additions to the uh, Polar Express uh, add-on cars for your set. Uh, we're on that as well, uh, as well as a few other other pieces. So uh, Christmas line for Flyer guys is definitely growing. Uh, a number of Christmas sets have already arrived or will be here shortly. Uh, we've got our perennial classics, of course. We've got a couple of new Christmas things this year, which are really cool. We've got the the uh, Lionel Junction set with the light-up track. Uh, of course, you can also buy the track separately. A lot of people have been talking about this since we announced it uh, about this time uh, last year. Uh, a really, really fun thing. Uh, this, what's great about this track is you can build it as its own independent loop. Uh, or you can also uh, clip it in with regular fast track. Uh, it doesn't require any extra power sources or anything like that. You can use it interchangeably with the entire fast track line. Uh, if you want to just have a special section of your layout that lights up, for example, uh, and the track will be available in some select sets and, and separately. We also have our light up Christmas train. Uh, these have a number of really cool things on, on them, uh, some extra LED lighting uh, and one thing we did that was a little bit different and pretty neat on this is the circuitry is actually timed so that the lights on the car dance with the in tune with the music that's playing on the car itself. So you get sound and light, and it's it's all orchestrated together uh, in its own little uh, little wonderful magic show there. So of course, lots of accessories and and, and more coming in. Um, just about everything Christmas is already here uh, or on its way to you, uh, Ken. So you guys should be well stocked in time for the holiday season, which is already apparently upon us. As, as Dean says, Christmas and Lionel trains. You can't have one without the other. <laughs> All right. So things shipping just this very week. Uh, this, we are at crunch time in our warehouse right now. Uh, we're getting anywhere from about five to uh, 15 containers a week. Uh, the warehouse is working multiple shifts and six days a week to try and keep up at this point. Uh, so lots of things are coming inbound, and then we're doing weekly shipments out to uh, all of our dealers. So as things come in, it shouldn't be too long of a wait before they get back out to all of you. Uh, arriving just this week so far, we had the uh, the Brass Hybrid 440s. I did a uh, unboxing on those last Friday uh, here at the home with with the uh, the ones I couldn't uh, resist for myself. Uh, beautiful locomotives. Those have been long awaited, uh, so they're, they're on their way to you. Uh, other legacy locomotives, the B6 switchers and the auxiliary water tanks uh, arrived this week, uh, and they'll be on their way to you. The Star Trek sets and some of the add-on rolling stock for that showed up. This was a really cool new license for us. A lot of buzz around this one. Uh, the cars are very cool, especially the aquarium car with uh, the lenticular uh, interior in it, which means that as the car, as you move the car side to side, the image inside the car changes for the, the hollow deck. So it's, it's kind of cool the way it appears and disappears in there. Uh, and we also have a, a lot of other scale rolling stock coming in, some of the Batman licensed rolling stock, Ford licenses. Um, of course, the Lionel Ale tank car, it's York, so I had to throw a uh, nice Lionel Ale car in there uh, for our, our over 21 crowd. Uh, some new American Flyer Christmas rolling stock I mentioned earlier, the Lion Chief 080. These are uh, like the Lion Chief engines you get in our sets, um, very value uh, value priced but a nice hefty uh, and, and good lo looking locomotive uh, on, a, on a lower price tag for those looking for an, an easy add-on to their roster, uh, as well as several uh, additional operating accessories that came in this week, including the Area 51 control tower uh, and a few other things. So lots of stuff just came in and will be on its way out to you shortly. Uh, coming in in the next couple of days and shipping next week, we have the Reading T1s, the legacy uh, steam locomotives, we have the ES44 ACs. Dave demoed some of the new sound features on those on social media about a week or so ago. Uh, these were uh, done with cooperation of CSX so that we could get all of the, the charitable organizations represented and do the graphics correctly. Uh, they were a huge help in making those, those come together for us. And we did some fun features with the sounds. Of course, all of our legacy locomotives now, you have uh, five different horns that you can, or whistles that you can select between. Uh, so one of the, the horn selections that we did in this was a custom quillable uh, fire and police siren 
uh, that's a lot of fun to play with uh, in between using the different railroad horns. So that's a new feature of all of our legacy engines this year and gives us the opportunity to have uh, even more fun with our, our rail sound system. And then the smoking reefers, as I mentioned as well, those will be arriving in the next day or two and then shipping uh, next week, uh, which is a cool new addition. These have sounds, uh, a, a, a cold smoke effect coming out from the doors, uh, lighted uh, power buttons on there and so forth. So a neat, uh, neat piece of rolling stock. And arriving in the next, uh, next week or two, these are getting very close um, and just uh, monitoring the schedule could be here uh, any day. You can see we've got several more legacy locomotives, the E8s, the SD40s, uh, some more scale rolling stock. Uh, the lighted fast track will be here very shortly. The Lion Chief Tier 4 uh, ET44 sets are getting very close, as well as the Toy Story and Frozen uh, sets for uh, the, the Disney lovers and the Pixar lovers out there. Uh, great Christmas time or any time trains there. Uh, I know um, Rich and Andy each had a couple of the Frozen sets on order for themselves. Um, <laughs> and, uh, they're, they're anxiously awaiting, and they wanted me to keep that a secret, but you know, I mean, at this point, they're not going to be around much longer, so we might as well let all the secrets out. <laughs> Cats out of the bag. <laughs> uh, I want to give a quick update on one of our signature items from the year, our Vision uh, locomotives. I was hoping to have a uh, sample to show you here tonight. The first production sample is on its way to us. It'll probably arrive in our office um, early next week. So keep an eye on our social media channels. We'll do a, uh, a, a couple shots of that so everybody can see what one of the production pieces look like. Uh, Dave did a, a Facebook pro, uh, promo on the uh, engineering prototype a couple of weeks back, uh, going through all the different features of these locomotives. So it'll be nice to have a nice decorated version uh, in hand here very shortly for everybody to see. These are in production, and, and barring anything else crazy happening, we expect these to uh, arrive and be shipped out to everybody in December. Uh, we're expediting the shipping on these to get them here as quickly as possible and maintain our initial uh, December delivery schedule on these. So uh, look forward to seeing some more updates and announcements on these in the very near future uh, as we get some more production pieces in-house and some more things to show you. But uh, the Vision engines, I know, highly awaited and always a, a big item, and we want to do our best to get these into everyone's hands uh, in time to put them in Santa's cart or uh, sleigh. So they're all on their way to you now. Uh, just a, a couple other housekeeping items here. Uh, you know, as everyone's mentioned, we, we do miss being out and seeing everybody at the shows. We've sort of adapted a lot this year to trying to do uh, as much as we could to reach out from home uh, with our social media programs. We've started a number of, of new programs over the last couple of months. Uh, Dave Olson, our uh, director of engineering uh, and uh, a favorite of, of everybody who, who knows him, he started a new program about a month ago. Uh, it'll be a bi-weekly program on Mondays called Demos with Dave. I got really excited when he said he was doing a Demo with Dave show. I, I grabbed my sledgehammer and my safety glasses, and I was all ready to come into the office and break stuff. Uh, and then he told me that, no, different kind of demo. <laughs> so, uh, But he does a, a great job focusing on um, a variety of features that uh, our locomotives have. Our legacy engines in particular, but also... Lion Chief Plus, Lion Chief, um, our accessories. There's a lot of things built into these locomotives that can be confusing or just aren't even uh, known by a lot of users. So whether you've been in the hobby for a long time or just getting started, he has a great way of breaking these things down and walking you through all the different steps and features and new developments and giving you sometimes a little bit of an inside look at what's going on in the engineering department um, and uh, a really, uh, really fun program. So highly recommend you tune into that. Uh, weeks opposite Dave, we have Workbench Wednesday with me here at the Workbench, uh, focusing more on the modeling side of the hobby. So if you're building your layout at home because you've got this extra time on your hands, tune in for modeling tips, tricks, techniques. Uh, things are relevant to all the different scales, and uh, we have a good time talking about that. We'll also be doing some more Lionel Live events uh, with some different stories and people inside the company uh, as a way, to, again, to connect to new audiences and our, our friends and give you an inside peek of, of the show. Get asked a lot about the Ryan and Dave show. Uh, we will be back at some point when uh, we can safely be together again. There's multiple ways to interpret that, uh, and all are applicable. Um, and there are some uh, other great new events that we have planned uh, with uh, 
in, inside the company and hopefully some more things with, with Train World moving forward. So stay tuned uh, for more updates as we get into the holiday season. Uh, and then the, uh, the last thing that uh, Mike Phillips insisted that I plug uh, was National Lionel Train Day. Uh, this will be Saturday, December 5th. Uh, we started this event about six years ago as a way to uh, get people out and support the local hobby shops. Uh, we wanted, wanted our, our customers to go out and visit our dealers, uh, go to the store, uh, you know, wander the aisles, check out, see what's going on. And I, I think this year, more than any, uh, a lot of people can use that support. Um, there's a huge list of participating shops, and you can go on to Lionel.com and see that uh, nationwide list. But I would advise uh, from the time that some of those folks responded to us until now, uh, a few things have changed in the world. So if you see a local shop there, I would advise you give them a call before you head out on December 5th. Make sure uh, that they are still open and able to be open and so forth. Um, but uh, definitely still invite everybody to encourage you to go out and support for our dealers nationwide, uh, especially Train World. Uh, and if you can't make it there in person, uh, visit them online. The uh, collectible boxcars that are part of that event, uh, they'll be uh, here very shortly and shipping out next month. So they'll be in the stores in plenty of time for the event for you to go and pick one up. So look forward to seeing, uh, seeing how that goes this year for everybody. And uh, it's been a uh, interesting year. So with that, Perfect. So it seems like you guys got a lot of product on its way. Um, a lot of good stuff. Uh, the GS is, is going to be a huge uh, arrival that tons of people have their orders on legacy stuff. And the National Train Day is going to be interesting, Ryan. Um, yes. I, I, I don't know. It, it, it's going to be one of those um, definitely call your local hobby shop before you come down. Uh, make sure they're, they're uh, you know, taking in people because I know certain people have certain restrictions, but hopefully we're able to open the floodgates uh, as we all want to happen. But it's going to be a little uh, little tricky. <laughs> yeah, well, th this is a, a great time of year for Lionel. We're very busy with things coming in and going. We don't usually do a whole lot of catalog announcements or new releases yeah. right now. Uh, we just did our C2 uh, program not too long ago. We just received our factory schedules in the last couple of weeks. So uh, you should be seeing an update on the Lionel shipping schedule here in the not too distant future as well with the C2 items added to that. Uh, we're hoping to ship some of those items uh, very early next year. It looks like we're getting a little bit of a jump uh, over where we were last year on production. So there are some good things to, to come there. Um, before, I, uh, before I sign off and, and turn it over, um, you know, I, it's 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 York, and so I, I was going to going to enjoy a as, as others did last time. As after we were wrapped up, I, I figured it'd be a nice night to enjoy a beverage and watch the rest of this. And I had a nice uh, a nice sixteen year Scotch sitting here ready for this program, but then I realized no, it's 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 probably possibly maybe Andy and Rich's last York. So I went out and found the cheapest beer I could find, <laughs> and uh, I think. Uh, to you guys uh, and everyone else who can't be gathered around the truck right now, uh, cheers to you and good luck. And I hope you're all living the high life. And I do hope this isn't the last uh, the last time we're we're gathered around some sort of a forum and talking to each other. But uh, thank you all. And with that, I will turn it over to the true leader of the industry, Angela. Well, thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate it very much. Uh, I've been delighted to be involved in this wonderful hobby and with Lionel now for 30 years, which is shocking for me to even say, but uh, it's been a great 30 years. And we've developed quite a wonderful relationship and I'm just happy that I'm able to keep continuing painting these paintings and everyone's enjoying them. So tonight I'd like to welcome you to my studio. I'm going to try, try to turn this a few different ways to show you around the studio. Let's see. Let's go this way. Um, and then you'll see some paintings in the background that I'll tell you a little bit about in a moment. Um, there, now, there. this is a, a cabinet my husband just built me to house many of the boxcars that I've done with Lionel over the years. And um, there are many more, actually, and many more coming out. But... Uh, we'll have to add more shelves, but I, I just was happy to be able to start to show and enjoy them because uh, we obviously can't run them all at one time. So 
Anyway, this is where I work. This is where I spend the majority of my time. Um, and it's a, it's a real happy studio as far as, you know, bright and cheery. I have great light um, coming in and uh, I'm constantly trying to work with, thank you very much for all your kind comments. Um, trying to work very much with Lionel and keep this, this going because I've really enjoyed painting these paintings. So in the background here, I'm going to just give you a little highlight about these four paintings. They are um, going to be on some surprise Lionel product next year. I'm not going to go through explaining them all to you because we're going to have a Christmas spectacular on November 17th, Tuesday night, with Megan at Lionel. And we're going to talk a lot more about how she and I and everyone there, we brainstorm, come up with ideas, concepts on uh, product and develop the paintings and how I develop these paintings so that they work right on the box cars and on the on the engines and everything else. So basically what I'm trying to do is, um, you know, save that for the 17th. So please, please join in on our, our Christmas spectacular on the 17th and I'll, I'll, I'll actually pull out the sketches and show you everything, show you the whole process about how I do this. So, but tonight I wanna talk a little bit more about um, how my business and my work has evolved over the last 30 years. I, uh, I started out doing all the limited edition prints, and obviously you know that, you've seen them over the years. But now what's happening is my business has truly evolved into creating paintings that I sell both um, at York and that sort of thing, and then also in galleries, and also doing a lot of, a lot of private commission work. And mostly that takes up most of my time anymore. So what I wanted to do is kind of just tell you a little bit about how I go about doing that and explain to you that um, just the process of, of how I work. Um, many people over the years have come up to me and asked me if they could have themselves or, them, or their grandchild or themselves as a child in a painting with their favorite train and, and just kind of talk to me about all their really special memories. And the nice part about doing private commission work is I have one client that I'm trying to please and, and I really can work hard to, to resurrect that memory and how much it, you know, Lionel trains have meant to them their whole lives. Um, so basically what I do is um, I work with the client, we talk about it, we brainstorm, we come up with a concept. And then I ask them to send me, if they want themselves as a child, obviously I need old pictures of themselves as a child. Uh, I have, we have like quite a few of the trains. So if I have the trains in our collection, then I don't need to send, I don't need, need them to send me photographs of the trains. But um, I will put the, I will put it together. You all give me the puzzle pieces and I'll put the painting together. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit about what, what I do to start with. Now, let's see if I can get this. Okay, yeah, that, that works. Um, I, I could also share them as well, whichever okay. you want, Angela. All right. Well, you can, if you want to, that, that's fine. That would be, because it's kind of hard to decide on which way is the straight way. <laughs> there we go. They, um, yeah, that's better. Okay. So this piece and the piece that's next, the, the next piece, which you can come up with, um, these are the pencil sketches that I did for a client for a diptych painting. And the diptych means two paintings that work together as one or they work to get they work on their own and the beauty of doing a diptych like this if you want you know something for two children um you can the the, the the you can leave these paintings to the children and there's not just one painting that all the children are in now i've done them both ways and i'm happy to do them anyway that makes someone happy but it's fun to do create these diptychs because they they're they're they they really make a a big presence on a wall the next piece, um, Ken, is the, yeah. And that's how it actually comes out with um, a finished piece. So they hang together and you can see that they work together, but each child has his own painting. And, that, and also the engines that are in these particular paintings are that child's favorite engine. So that's how that painting came together. Now, the next one I'm gonna talk about is um, this client 
sent me a, his, a picture of him as a child. And then the next picture is he sent me a picture of his 736 that he wanted featured in his painting. And this is how I put the painting together. So what you noticed, if you noticed on the paint picture of him as a, as in the beginning, his eyes were looking off to the, to the left, I believe. Well, that didn't work for the painting. So I obviously had to change his eyes so that he was looking at the train. For his particular holidays, they always put menorah out and, and the menorah was always part of the layout. So he really wanted that to not necessarily be a, a, a huge presence, but he wanted it to be a presence in the painting. So that's how we brainstormed and came up with the idea to add that, that special piece for this particular client. Um, okay, now this one was um, a takeoff from my, my very first print was Window Wishing. Uh, that was probably, the, and still is to this day, the most iconic uh, print painting that I've done. This little, uh, this this was a private commission for a, a man that commissioned me to do um, his grandson uh, with the with the Gigi one. So many of my actual original paintings have been the the jump off point for many of the of the commission paintings, as you'll see in the next one. That is, that should be, yeah, yeah. This was a, the same thing. Uh, this client wanted his grandson to be, um, and, and he's a, his Southern is his, is his favorite engine. So this is how we put this one together. And this one actually became a, a jump off to many other commissions, which, which will come up to as we go through. So let's see, this was another one. And, and these are portrait paintings, but the nice thing about these portrait paintings are they are, with either the collector's favorite train or the child's favorite train. So it makes it a special piece just for that particular family. Thank you. And this was this was actual, actually a diptych as well. So these two paintings work together. This is, these are two brothers, the, other, the, the one you just saw and then this one. This was a piece that someone wanted with, a, with a, I think, I can't remember, this was might have been him as a child from an old photograph. And um, just with a Lionel layout was, was what he was, a Christmassy layout, that's what he wanted. So. Yeah, uh, Angela, a lot of requests for you to do a catalog cover for well, Lionel. I have done many Lionel catalog covers. If you go back the, two in 2000, I think was the, first one I did and then I've done three or four since then so um, if you go through them you you'll see some catalog covers I've done that with Lionel and I've actually and done the, and done the, the art on the, pro the products so we've done a lot together this was actually this particular piece was a an old photograph this is this is this man's grandchildren and it was a small little black and white photo and they got the Santa Fe engine for Christmas and really it pretty much looks exactly like the old photo. Um, I had to add the color and uh, I do that a lot. I work a lot from little black and white, those little tiny black and white photos from way back when I add the color and bring it to a painting that, you know, can be an heirloom piece for the, the children someday. You can go to the next one now. Let's see. And this one was three brothers, and their three favorite trains. And that none of those were together, so I had to put it all together and make sense out of it. That's another thing. I don't have to have all the reference put together in the photograph and sent to me. Um, you send me the puzzle pieces. I walk you through it, and I'll get what I need from you to be able to make a, a, a nice painting out of it. So go ahead. You can go to the next one, Ken. I think that's it. That's it. Okay. Well, I have a few more, so I will. I will add a few. I will add them as I we go here. Just bear with me. And while, while we're waiting, Angela, I think uh, we're going to send Rich and Andy's uh, baby pictures to you, so you could do a final uh, mementos for them. <laughs> that would be fine. I I like I, I, that. So I was just going to talk about this one. I I, I do paint the the the, the um, people. Uh, at this age now, but I do really prefer to paint the children. <laughs> but anyway, this was an actually a portrait for a client of his father, uh, and his father I was part of the um, 
writing of the of that book and then that was his favorite engine so this is how this painting came together Very nice. i have um i just have a couple more just to give you an idea of some of the some of the options and some of the things that, that you can send this one was a, a five of a five by seven black and white photograph of the boy you know from 50 years ago his engine this was a jump off of his engine he wanted the um uh, the the southern, and then he, that's his dream house, which he has built. So we wanted to put the dream house in it as well. So I can kind of bring a lot of things, you know, that are important to people in a painting and make sense out of it. Um, this one was a, a picture from with the little boy, black and white. Let's see, my goodness, black and white photo back in the day. Pretty blurry, but I we worked it out. He actually wanted the the cord. These are the memories that he had: the the the, the, the uh, little house and the the tunnel and that electric cord that was in the le into the electric socket and that little Santa that stood there. So all these parts of this painting meant a lot to him. So we made sure we got them all in. And I do one other thing. I do is I don't always do portraiture. I do. Um, Many paintings for people of just their trains, uh, if they want, for like for example, like the one in the background there. Um, that's just two two favorite engines, you know. So it can be, and and actually, um, well stock shelves on the wall there is all trains. We can do private commission paintings like that too. It doesn't have to be a portrait or a specific memory. It can be just your favorite engines. So these are the th kind of things that they've turned in, turn these, I've been able to turn these people's memories into something that they can enjoy every day. And it gives me a lot of satisfaction an, as an artist to be able to do that. So I've been very grateful to uh, be affiliated with Lionel for so long. And uh, I miss all, you, all of you. I miss seeing you at York. I miss, you know, being able to get together face to face and hopefully next year we'll be able to do that again. But for now, I want to thank you very much. If you have any questions, if you're interested in talking to me, you know, feel free to call me. Um, my, and my, just email me and we'll, we'll set something up. My email address is just my name, Angela Trotta Thomas at gmail.com. So please feel free to contact me anytime and I'll answer all your questions. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it very much. Well, thank you so much, Angela. That was fantastic. I actually didn't know that uh, people could send their p own picture or maybe their grandfather's picture in and have it commissioned for where you would take their picture and actually create something. I think that's actually uh, amazing. Quite honestly, I'm going to email you later. I, I'd, I'd like to do something. Uh, probably I'll send you a picture of my grandfather. So I, I think that's a, a really nice thing that you do. And it, you know, trains is a, a, a feel good tradition where it's, it's a lot with the, the father, the grandfather and starting out as a young boy or sometimes a, a young lady and getting into trains. So I, I think that it's something where you could cherish and, you know, just hang it up on the wall and just, I, I, your artwork is just unbelievable, really nice. So this was a, a nice treat. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, I enjoyed this very much. Thank you. Thank you. And um, so so thank you very much, Angela. And we're going to head over to uh, the dynamic duo that will greatly be missed. And hopefully they will stick in the industry. Maybe someone bought them. Maybe someone didn't. Uh, who knows? It's all up in the air. But Rich and Andy have some good stuff they'd like to share with us. Hey, thanks, Kenny. Uh, yeah. Before I start, uh, having my picture uh, <laughs> painted by Angela, um, years ago I did pose for some artists, but it's not something I'm very proud of. So I, I think I'll pass for right now. So. Yeah, Rich. Uh, He's been around. He's had some bad days, and uh, nobody wants to see any of that stuff. No, no, it's no. Uh, probably not as bad as the picture of me in that Williams book. No, that was bad. <laughs> I yeah, bet so you were both cute kids. Yes. Yeah, I was rocking those. 
people. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not so much now. Not so much. <laughs> so, uh, you know, here at MTH, obviously, we've been uh, hammering out our 2020 Volume 1, 2020 RTR, and 2020 Volume 2 products. Yeah. Um, most of that merchandise is already sold through, even though it all has not yet arrived. Um, so uh, we don't have a lot of things to show. Um, we do have some collections that we want to go over that uh, are seasonal in uh, nature, um, as well as some new uh, products uh, that uh, have kind of been uh, bandied about a little bit, um, as well as some of the things that uh, Kenny has at Train World that... Uh, his dad's been buying, uh, and I'm pretty sure that <laughs> Junior's a little annoyed with that. No? <laughs> he, he accused me of I, elder abuse I, yesterday. I, I, so, yes. That, so you were taking advantage of it. Is I, that I, what you're saying? I, I just want to uh, clarify. I, right. I, I saw the invoice and saw the amount that my father was buying from Rich, and I just had to call up Rich, and I, I said, what? Well, you're taking advantage of an old man. What's going on, Rich? <laughs> and and I, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, my, my father's usually very sharp with this stuff, but, you know, he, he wants to stock up every single bit of MTH product. Um, it's, it's been going out like water since you guys made the announcement, but um, I still said, listen, you should have at least got a discount from Rich. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> well, I, I treated him well. Yeah, and well. you know, if, if Rich is handing out discounts, <laughs> he's in deep doo doo, so that wouldn't work. Uh, so your dad had to, he had to come to Jesus, as it were, and pay what it, pay what it is. So, well, we're, we're going to miss that. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, we'll, we'll start with uh, what is very topical right now. We have two topical things today. Um, and the first thing is that uh, in a week or so, 10 days, right? Uh, less than that, eight, eight, what's today, Thursday? Eight days uh, is Halloween. And uh, Ryan, of course, did a, a little Halloween thing and, and he likes to steal my thunder. Um, but say la vie. So I'm gonna let Rich jump through this. Uh, there's a bunch of different items that have all come in and are all on retailer shelves, including Train World, so certainly don't hesitate to head over to their site and uh, check out some of that. But uh, these are product shots of all of the samples, I believe, yeah, that have the, come the in. The boxcar so. with the glowing eyes, we've done a Frankenstein in the past and some others. It's, we've done five in this series. This will be the fifth. Um, they're in stores now. The, uh, we also uh, have some gondolas that have ghosts and pumpkins that light up as well that are very popular and uh this is i think the second year we've done the gondolas with the uh pumpkins and the ghosts yeah i think we reversed the paint schemes this year yes we did yeah. so uh, those have been very popular and well. those ghosts and pumpkins flicker they just use regular track voltage and that's constant voltage uh they look great at night these shots were shot kind of in a dark thing with some extra uh time lapse going on and and my smoke machine which i'm quite proud of Go ahead. Sorry, Sorry to interrupt you. Um, not a problem. And uh, so obviously these, here's the ghosts that are lighting up. And um, we also have a smoking tank car and uh, just put MTH smoke fluid in there. It works off track power. There is an on off switch on there if you start smoking yourself out of the room. So you don't need to leave that on. And then this is our fourth Halloween operating action car. Um, and they've been popular in years past as well. Um, and then the pumpkin stand is new for this year um, with the LEDs around the signs uh, up top. They're, that's been a popular, popular building. And this year is the first year we've done a Transylvania station. So they just came in stock and they should be. Matter of fact, Kenny, I bet you just got these in the last uh, couple of shipments. And then, of course, the uh, ES44 that has the orange charging lights under the frame um, and Halloween sounds as well. So the, uh, the uh, locomotive itself uh, not only has the sounds, which you can't hear because I couldn't figure out how to make the audio play, which is a failure on my part, and I apologize. But 
Um, there's all kinds of different sound effects uh, associated with it. it. It's pretty cool. It's one of the neat things about ProtoSound 3. You trigger those from DCS uh, or conventional transformer, uh, bell and whistle button combination. Uh, of course, you can use our app to do the same thing. So those are pretty slick, and uh, this is the third or fourth year we've done this engine caboose combo. I think fourth. Yeah, and uh, you know, all told, uh, these different um, cars and the series and so forth, you could build a pretty doggone long train. Yeah. Uh, did I say doggone? Yes, you did. Right, just checking. <laughs> uh, just checking. Anyway, I'm not going to let this go too long because there's no sound and you can't hear it. But if you go to our website, this is on the front page of the website, so you can check out those sounds and certainly on our YouTube channel as well. So next up, uh, Rich, uh, this, is, this is the sore subject with Ken Jr. and Ken Sr. Well, his, his dad is actually a pretty sharp guy and uh, really cornered the market on flats with the die-cast military loads. And they are very nice cars. The loads are detailed. They are die cast. Um, these things have been very popular over the last, uh, what, about three years? About three or four years yeah. we've been doing these die cast loads. They're so, 148 scale, so they'll fit in fine with your O-Gage Railroad. Um, and we offer single cars with uh, one or two loads, depending on the size of the load. And then four car sets, uh, usually two SKUs. For the four car set so you can have up to what 10 cars i think yeah and they, they're available in both premier and rail king so uh, uh right now train world has according oh. to junior uh, too many of them but uh <laughs> he has everyone that's on the screen everyone that's coming up on the screen so i think it's good yeah, yeah. i do too yeah you know so uh what do we got the duck and then the jeeps Right, and yeah. uh, I personally think those Jeeps are super well done. There's all kinds of extra detail mm -hmm. on these things. You can see the shovel there. Um, apologies for not removing the um, the strap that holds it in place. Um, these are production models out of inventory, yeah. and uh, I find them to be um, just brutal to reattach with those things. So there's, there's a lot of different loads, Bradley fighting vehicles, Jeeps, ducks, um, and whatnot. So they're all available now at Trainwall. Aren't you aren't you happy with us, Kenny? Thanks for the plug, Rich. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> My father's gonna need every plug if he wants to come back. <laughs> our, our pleasure, man. You know, we, it's all about business, right? Uh, um, at the beginning of the show, I mentioned that COVID has had some impact on us, uh, in particular with. Um, some of the production uh, scheduling and releases and whatnot. So uh, what this show was all about was O-Gage and S-Gage, um, which for us is good because if we had to also talk about HO and G-Gage, um, it gets rather lengthy because we have so many different products. Uh, anyway, we're in the process of manufacturing our S-Gage locomotives that were featured in the 2019-2020 uh, catalog. And this catalog is uh, available uh, on the website. We never did um, uh, print it. Uh, it was always just a digital print, uh, digital release. So it's on the, um, on the uh, website. And to get there, you just go to mthtrains.com and click on catalogs and then scroll down. You'll see all of our different catalogs, um, Premier, Rail King, HO, and of course the S gauge and G gauge. Just click on that and it's an interactive book. And, uh, you can just page through it as if you were uh, sitting in your bathroom, sort of. I'd rather not think about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some guys. Uh, Go ahead. No, so there, is, there are some uh, F's, uh, F7s aren't going to be out until the end of uh, the year, beginning of next year. Um, February, in fact. Yeah. Their, their, their production run is in December. And um, there's five different road names um, that we're doing. Six were cataloged, but uh, five are being produced. Yeah, and the SW8s should be actually being built as we speak. They should be here in December. Um, you jumped over NW2s. It goes well, in order. Well, NW2s after that, so allow me to go. I bet the, some... the page. Oh, I'm sorry. NW2s will be out around, uh, what did we say on those? January. Indeed. And... Uh, one of the things about uh, these flipbooks is when you click on an image, it'll zoom up for you so you can check out the details. 
And um, you can also click on the item numbers, the descriptions, and that will take you to the website so that you can learn more things about it. Uh, what road names are we doing in these NW2s? Uh, UP, Santa Fe, Nickel Plate Road, B&O, Lehigh Valley, and I think CSX. Excellent. So the website's got all the features and the overview and the Find It Locally page. Um, and when you click on that Find It Locally, if we haven't delivered them yet, it'll show you who has them on order. And uh, you can contact those dealers and place them. All of those locomotives in the S-Gage book are still available and um, uh, for uh, order. Uh, we have not sold through them. We're getting close on some yeah, of them. Yeah, we are close. But uh, we still have all of them. So if... Um, if you're interested in any of those, as you page through the flip book, uh, go right ahead. Uh, toward the back of this book, there's the Z4000. We're doing another run on this, is, is that correct? Uh, we're supposed to. Okay, so we'll see if that happens. Um, the um, That's been our bestseller for years. No? Yes. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> when you think about it, that was 97? Yeah. Yeah, so we long have a, time. We have a customer asking when the Premier 440s will be out and they should be toward uh, I think middle to the end of November we should see those um, okay that's good I haven't seen a pre-production sample yet I'm sure it's been here but I haven't seen one well for uh, those who don't know the big boys we hadn't had an O-Gage steam a premier steamer in here for a while um, big boys just got in and, and they should be in stores now including train wool excellent now, we did mention topical things, obviously Halloween being in a week or so. And, um, you know, Ryan mentioned it earlier, so two old guys going at it tonight. And um, uh, I think Kenny, you know, he's getting very good at, at hosting these things. Right. He might want to get into debate moderation. He might. I mean, it yeah. could be a career, you know. I, I think you're right. Move um, I'll decide so, who gets muted. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do we got here, Rich? Uh, we got our election series. Uh, we got both uh, DNC and RNC hand cars with an uh, image of Joe Biden and an image of John, Donald Trump uh, with Uncle Sam. and uh, Donald Trump hadn't worked that hard in his Yes. Yeah, he's, he's slimmed down. He's slimmed down. Yeah. It must have been the COVID. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> do you still have these, Kenny? Uh, yeah, we, we we actually, I think we bought them all. <laughs> Is that another argument between you and your dad? No, 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 no. 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 This, uh, you, you they were, they were very one? popular sellers. See, if Kenny agrees with it, it it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, if Kenny, if Kenny, so, um, yeah, but there's plenty of uh, different. Uh, Rail King rolling stock for celebrate the election if anybody wants to. Uh, also ES 44s in both Rail King and Premier for both uh, DNC and RNC as well. So uh, up next is a, a new announcement from us uh, that actually was done in the HO catalog that came out this summer. Uh, also a virtual catalog. This is a new uh, piece of DCS technology that will be out next year that will be replacing the TIU and WIU and remote. Um, and it's called a WTIU, we're, we're good for... for um, we uh, love yeah, our acronyms. Yeah, acronyms, we're good at that, yeah, for sure. Uh, so this is an all-in-one device. It'll interact with your smart device, uh, iOS or Android, and you will be able to run your trains with that device um, in lieu of the WIU and the TIU and, and so forth. So it's uh, kind of combining things. It's a natural progression with the technology and that will be out next year. Um, so there is some new product coming uh, in addition to all of the stuff that we've cataloged up to this point in time. And do you understand how it works? Oh yes. I don't believe it. I'm, uh, I'm tech challenged, but I'm not that tech challenged. Well, you got the earbuds into your ear today. So yes, I did. Yep. Yep. yes, I did. Yep, so that's good. Um, so what do we got next? Uh, Christmas Christmas, product. yeah. Well, who doesn't love Christmas? Um, and, you know, Lionel, they've done an excellent job of stealing our thunder with the lights and stuff and cars. Well, they, you know, we are the leaders, so yeah. they, they follow. Yeah. They know a good idea when they see one. Yes, exactly. So uh, what we've got um, going on with the, the Christmas is really four different types of things. Um, in terms of deco, why don't you explain that? Yeah, we have the North Pole series, um, 
which we have quite a bit of uh, different product, including lit pa uh, passenger cars with LEDs. Uh, and, and what's interesting about these cars is their colors. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if anybody's picked up on that, but they're 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 sort of matching. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. So oh, there's the doors upside down. And the uh, we have an operating action car, a box car that has flashing cross bucks. And then now we're into the uh, Trish, uh, Christmas uh, Santa Claus type of engine here with charging lights, Santa hand car. Um, uh, we have an operating uh, box car so, with Santa Claus. So he comes out? He comes out and the lantern is lit. Yeah, good, and, uh, good guy would have lit that up. Yes, a good VP of marketing would have lit that up. Yeah. Flat car with trailer. Uh, been popular and then the, these flats with Christmas trees have been just fantastic for us. We do them in green, white, and red. So some folks like to buy them and alternate the different colors uh, behind their engines. And then of course we've made a Christmas box car for Lord, I don't know how many years. Uh, well, we started doing Christmas box cars back in 1997. Correct. Yeah. And, um, do, a, do you have one of those? Uh, yes, I do, as wow. a matter of fact. And do you? A smoking tank car, those have been popular as well and um, whatnot. So then we also have a more, uh, for those who like to bring the uh, meaning of Christmas more back to their trains, we have more religious themed Christmas uh, cars and engine. Um, and those Each one of these popular. cars has different message on it and different graphics, so it's a pretty cool Correct. looking set. Um, yeah, pretty good looking set. And then uh, next up, uh, this is where Lionel's really stolen our stuff. Yeah, we have the uh, yeah. passenger station with the LEDs. Those uh, go well under uh, any train garden. And then farmhouse, country house with uh, operating LEDs as well. And some row houses that uh, also have operating LEDs. So do you know how many Christmas oriented stuff we've done? Off the top of my head, I don't, but I'm sure you looked it up before. We well, got... I wrote it on your sheet. You, you did. Didn't... But again, you didn't my read. My goodness, I didn't don't read, read that. Yeah, yeah. 200. 200. Mercy. Yeah, 200 different Christmas things. Not this year, but in, in total. Okay. Over the years. So. Okay. And that's just, uh, that's not including tin plate or any of that stuff. Too. Yeah, understood. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at. Um, Rich's uh, GoFundMe page is going well. <laughs> Well, what, what is the theme of that? It's anyway? a little light right now. It's a little light. So I would ask all to, you know, have well, mercy on me. Well, I mean, do you, I don't understand what you're trying to raise. Is well, there a theme I, to it? Usually I, a GoFundMe like page to, has success if it's got a theme behind it. I would like to try to not live <laughs> off dog food the rest of my life. Okay. All right. Anyway. Well, what, you know, I'm pretty annoyed because they eliminated the Walmart greeter position. <laughs> Yes, they now, did. What am I going to do? No greeter <laughs> position. Well, anyway, Kenny, I can't sit through the, the entirety because I promised my daughter I'd help her with a project. You're leaving? Tonight. So I do have to go. Can you turn the air conditioning on? I it's do, hot. Yes, it is hot in here. Um, and I don't want to be sitting next to a sweaty Andy um, for very long. Yeah, but understand. I, do, I, I would like to say thanks again for doing this. It's, um, it's, I think it's very important and Thanks for including us, um, the dead men walking. <laughs> dead men so, walking, indeed. And thanks for, I've been reading a lot of comments out there for folks, uh, Erica and Greg, I miss you, seeing you guys at York and there's so many other good comments. I can't mention them all, but thank you guys for the kind words. Have a nice life. <laughs> I always say that to bartenders in cities. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you've said it a lot. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you guys take care of yourself. Back to you, Kenny. Uh, Rich, before you guys go, um, I I just want to say, everyone out there, make sure you comment, whether you're on Facebook, uh, the Train World Trainland page, or even on YouTube. Give a shout out to MTH, Andy, and Rich Foster. These two guys are the backbone of MTH. And, you know, even though Mike's the, the CEO of, of the company, he needed a strong team in order to be successful. Every CEO, the reason why he's successful is the team 
behind him. And kudos to Rich and Andy because they, they're just two stand-up guys and two people in this industry that any company would die and love to have, you know, running their business. And, you know, it just two amazing people in the train industry. Can't say enough about you guys. Um, Rich, I, I personally speak to Rich like every day. So it's it's just like a, a, a odd thing. And like now every day I'm calling and Rich is telling me, Ken, I, I don't have anything left. <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> it, it, it's it's just a, a, a strange feeling right now. And um, uh, just kudos to you guys. You guys changed and pays, paved this industry tremendously. Um, what you guys have accomplished and done is just remarkable. So toast to you, uh, Andy, Rich. Thank you guys so much for everything, the memories. And I I, I know this is sounding depressing, but I, I know both of you will find a place inside this hobby because, like I said, you know, any manufacturer or uh, company in the train industry will love to have you. Um, so we... We just wish you nothing but the best. We really do. Well, thanks. We're not dead yet, so uh, we're not dead. <laughs> who, who, do you have to pay him, or is it me? <laughs> well, I, I mean, decide. He's, he's looking for you know commission. Yeah, I know he is. He's got Rich, his Rich hand is out. looking for uh, a GoFundMe page uh, <laughs> handout. So I, I, I mean, I, I, at least I could hype it up and really get this thing going. But Rich, Rich you got to tell them the web address at least so they could donate. <laughs> There's no page. <laughs> anyway, but thanks so much. Kate. So you're leaving. I got to go help my dog. Okay, so, so well, I'll hang out. But thanks for having me. All right, thank you guys. And uh, I, again, today we, we got in 13 pallets of uh, MTH products. So we're stocking the shelves as quick as we can because the MTH product is leaving the station so quickly. So make sure you jump on it, place your uh, orders, get them in. We actually had a shut off all the pre-orders for MTH product because it was selling out so quickly. So um, just get it in and make sure you thank Rich and Andy for all they've done throughout the years. Uh, okay, so next up, uh, we'll kick it off to Jarrett. And sorry if it's just a, a lot to say in that segment, Jarrett. Up, oh, you're you're on mute. Uh, there we go. There we go. All right. So um, another, uh, this normally would be, you know, the time where we would be at the, uh, the, the York show. And um, instead, you know, Kenny, I'm in the basement of Atlas's headquarters in Hillside, New Jersey. And since we can't be at York, I'm going to bring York to you guys and everybody else by showing you the Atlas O York cool. show dog bone layout. Um, this layout was originally built by Atlas employee and master layout builder, Steve Horvath for Atlas to showcase our world renowned Atlas O track and model train products. And I'm just going to switch over to a, a better view of this layout. So you guys can see what we're working with here. So this layout is 45 feet long and 10 feet at the flared dog bone ends. And this layout was a very popular attraction at many York shows over the past decade. So I'm gonna show you guys a look at the line of track products that make up this layout. And then we'll dive right into a layout tour. Coming is everything through coming through okay, great. Kenny? Uh, you got a huge warehouse, Jarrett. We got a big warehouse. It's <laughs> filled with Atlas O track too. So just so that everybody knows, Atlas O track is currently at almost 100% availability. The warehouse behind this track board that shows all of our various three rail track products uh, it's filled with Atlas O track stock. So if you need track, you can contact Kenny at Train World or contact Atlas on Facebook, and we can help you get any track structures, accessories, electrical components that you need for the layout. 
Uh, we have O scale track in both two and three rail. And I'm just going to give you guys a quick shot of our main line here. Let's see if I can pull this up. Just gives you a good look at our track. And the first thing that you notice when you're looking at our track is the appearance. It's really beautiful. The, the scale size plastic ties have realistic wood grain. The tie plates have spikes. You can see in the foreground some of the rail joiners. They have authentic bolt detail and the center rail is blackened. We chose a solid nickel silver rail for extra stability and electrical conductivity. And in addition, the wide flat surface of the rails provides uh, far better wheel to contact uh, and better traction than traditional tubular track. And the solid rail actually absorbs sound better than tubular track. So you can enjoy the sounds of your locomotive. I'm just gonna pull a loco out of this uh, back section here so you guys can get a little action while I'm talking. Um, you know, every piece, you know, has been engineered to fit, you know, precisely together in a variety of different combinations without the need, you know, to custom cut and fit. Um, just check out this, uh, this nice shot of this loco going by. Real smooth running, very quiet track. Beautiful trains too. Looks phenomenal. Thank you. This is our California Zephyr uh, train that we put out just about just, just over four years ago. It's just a, a really beautiful model here. So we'll go back to our track board. I'm gonna, just going to talk a little bit. So if you check out the lower left hand side of the board. I'm not exactly sure if you guys can see, but you could sort of in the left bottom corner, uh, you can see the transitional pieces that we make um, to transition to other brands. And the combined rail and tie height of Atlas O-Track was very carefully engineered so we could match the overall height of Lionel, Curtis, Ross, and Gargraves. So you'll have no problem connecting to any other track brands that you might have. So those are all of our transitional pieces. Um, we've also made a lot of improvements over time to our switches. And um, I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see this, but over the past 10 years, we've really made improvements. Um, you can see here, we added these bus bars to the back of all the switches and this helps to improve conductivity and you know um help with uh, uh you know locomotives not shorting out and um you know all this all these improvements we've listened to the customers over the years and you know whatever their demands are we've helped them with uh especially with these switches so i just thought that was important to bring up Moving along, let's go on to the turntable that we have on this layout and see if we can check this out. Wrong camera. Here we go. So this is our new and improved O-scale turntable. It has a more powerful upgraded motor and flat cog belt for zero slip. We also added rollers throughout the bottom of the deck of the turntable to support heavier locomotives. And it could be used with both two and three rail engines. Um, you can remove the middle rail uh, if you wanna run a two rail engine. This is this piece is $299.95. And Kenny, I think this would be a very nice gift for dad for Christmas. Without a doubt. And this turntable, this is actually, I, I believe it came out like uh, maybe six months or a year ago. But everybody is going crazy over this. Everybody needs it. And uh, Jared, your track sells like water for us. I mean, we have to constantly 
you know, reorder more. And they love that it looks so realistic, but yet it's easy to snap together and use at the same time. So you guys have some of the best track on the market for sure. Thanks, Kenny. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, we uh, have taken a lot of time, a lot of R&D, uh, a lot of design and engineering have gone into the track. And, um, you know, I think you could you could tell by by this layout. I mean, you know, it, it really is an outstanding um, you know, work, work of art. You know, it, it's really yeah. you know, just a beautiful layout. And um, I'm going to move along and talk about one other feature on this layout and that's going to be the uh, bridge that's behind the California Zephyr here. We're going to move the Zephyr along so we can get a better shot. Just bear with me one minute. Speed this guy up. All right. So this bridge is what I wanted to focus on in the back here. This is our uh, through trust bridge and these are available now and we have a single bridge and an add-on kit that you can use to make the single into a double it's a 40 inch long incredibly detailed structure kit that's a very common site on the railroads today it's based on a missouri pacific railroad prototype uh, the overall height's nine and a half inches from the bottom of the deck to the top of the bridge so it's plenty of clearance for any trains that you have on your layout. The three rail kit also includes transition joiners for any other track brands on the market. And this piece is $299.95 and will make a very nice addition to anyone's layout. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Atlas O signal that you can see on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, the Atlas O signal system is available now, uh, multiple different variations. We have a new universal signal control board that allows you to set up a standalone block or multiple signals all at once on your layout. So that's a, uh, a new O scale accessory that you can add to your layout for ultimate realism. And I think at this point, I'll just give you guys a nice run through of our California Zephyr train. Um, you can blast the horn. And, you know, this is, uh, I mean, this used to be my favorite part of the York show when we'd set up this layout and get the trains running. You know, this train that we have here, um, the thing's a, a monster. It's, it's 21 feet long. Uh, we set this up in a ABA configuration and um, they're all, you know, these are all powered units. You'll, you'll hear the, the sound, the sounds phenomenal. So let me just give you guys a, a run through here and, um, and we'll go from there. And you guys also have a couple of long Island products uh, coming out in o, o scale too, that uh, yes. we've taken some great orders and, um, uh, they they fill in nicely on your layout for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, we can't forget the Long Island customers, and uh, <laughs> we got a bunch of uh, new Long Island products. So, without further ado, I'm going to run this uh, this train down the track here. All right, here it comes, Kenny. All right. Oh, sorry, the horn cut you off, Kenny. That's all right. Keep on going. So this California Zephyr, like I said, was a, it's a, it, it came as a 12 car set and it, it was comprised of a baggage car, the dome chair car, various different buffet and diner cars, sleeping cars. And, um, you know, there's actually 
two of these that are that are refurbished and actually running today that you can actually go and visit um, through the California Zephyr rail car charter. And you can actually experience this, uh, you know, for yourself, which is pretty cool. And um, the way that we're running this right now is true to the uh, how it ran and was configured in, in 1952. So it's a, you know, a pretty cool reproduction and reconfiguration of our, of our, uh, of this set. They're beautiful cars, uh, Jared. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kenny. I'm, I'm very proud of uh, this set and this layout. And, um, you know, just to, to sum it up, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're not all together at the York show. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to bring a little bit of York to everybody tonight. Uh, you know, we miss everybody. We miss all of, seeing all of our customers. We miss seeing all of our peers and colleagues. And, um, you know, I just uh, just got to say, just stay safe out there. And, um, you know, check uh, shop.atlasrr.com for new product announcements and anything to do with Atlas O. And just want to say thank you to you, you, Kenny, for putting this on. Thank you very much, Jared. And, uh, I, again, Atlas O scale products and, you know, At Atlas also sells HO, N scale, uh, Z scale. They, they do it all, but um, their track in O scale specifically is uh, just we sell it in abundance and it's just uh, crazy, but it's great stuff, good quality. And, um, you know, when you think Atlas, quite honestly, you guys think, you know, you track, you know, it starts with the track, but obviously you make more than just track, but. Um, just really great product, great stuff, and great to have you, Jared. And good seeing you. <laughs> great to see you too, Kenny. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much, Jared. Appreciate it. And um, for now, we are uh, rounding out the show, and we're going to kick it off to uh, Larry. And uh, uh, Larry, why don't you – yep, you're good. And how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Um, I just want to tonight, you know, we, we normally do our new announcements earlier in the year. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight is just kind of run through everything O gauge in the Bachman line. Um, Bachman has been around in O gauge for a long time. I started out with the Plasticville line, still pretty popular today. You got the, the Cape Cod houses this is back 1946, I think was the first. O gauge product we had in the line. There's the ever famous Frosty Bar. The Plastic Ville comes in kits. I have them glued together here so I can handle them without them going apart. But um, you can, there's lots of things you can do with them. You can detail them, um, highlight the paints. Uh, we have uh, like a, also a produce stand that come, um, you can paint all the vegetables. It looks really colorful. Um, so that's, that's how we kind of got started in O gauge. And it's been 13 years since I've been with Bachman now. Uh, 2007, Williams was purchased by Bachman Trains. And we've kind of joined the, the two lines together, the, the scenery end of it and the train end of it, because they had plenty of other items besides uh, trains, but they didn't have any O-gauge trains. So um, I just wanted to go through, run through the whole line, kind of show you different things we have in the line besides trains as well. Um, one thing uh, we have is a, a line called Proses. We're the exclusive distributor in, in the United States for this, these items. And they have some really cool tools and such. This is a ballast spreader you can use for <coughs> excuse me, um, putting ballast on any type of three rail track. You just load the hopper in the top and kind of push it along the track and it spreads it around nice and evenly. Um, they also make uh, some kits that you can use to, this one is a cable reel kit, it's uh, die cut with um, laser cut and you can just snap it together pretty much. And this is also, we have a uh, wooden crates that you can use for flat cars and such or by your station. Um, we have a very good selection of scenery 
figures or no gauge. Something you don't know. Seen scape line. We have people, different people. This guy's in a motorcycle. We have workers. Skill. Workers. And some animals as well. We have some pigs. And we have some recently, this was just added. There's a nice line of horses, including the one with the blanket on it. That's pretty cool looking. So some cats. I think we had some dogs as well. I didn't bring those along tonight for show, but there's a good number of, uh, of, of figures that you can choose from. Um, one more thing kind of got lost in the catalog. This is pretty cool. This is a opening engine house. Uh, engine house. Two, two doors, everything is, it's a kit. It takes a little bit of time to put together. The, uh, the hard part is the, that, that would be a, to assemble is already pre-assembled for you. The, operating doors so that snaps together and you get you can paint it any color you want it's, but it's a laser cut kit um, it operates off of DC power comes with a little control panel that raises doors up and down it's a pretty neat little item there so so the newest um, back now to, to William oh one more thing scenery items one thing you can never have enough of is trees we have some really big trees, as you can see. We have all different sizes. These trees are really have no scale, but these are 10 inches tall. Snow trees, great for your winter scenes. And then we had some other oak trees as well. I didn't bring those tonight, but um, check out our website. You can look at the entire line of, of trees. Um, the Williams line, let me get to that now. The newest uh, locomotive we've introduced is the 70 tonner. Yeah, you've been knowing these at Kenny, okay? Huge success, Larry. Huge success. There's two of the uh, locomotives. This is Southern Pacific. There's four road names in total. They come with uh, one of the things people asked us when we first took over Williams was please don't change the conventional um, aspect of the hobby. We like, we don't want, they all with the, the Williams trains were. Um, easy to use, didn't have to have a command system, didn't have complicated electronics. So that's something we pretty much listen to our customers on. We, we um, get comments from museums all the time um, that they use our, our equipment because it's so easy to maintain and it pulls and runs forever. So um, you know, that's one, the, one thing I always loved about working for the company. I used to volunteer for the B&O Railroad Museum and put up a Christmas layout and it was a lot of fun putting all our stuff around there. So. Um, that's, you know, we have a, a complete line of, you know, diesels are, are definitely our primary mode of power is an NW2. This is like, this is one of our golden memories, uh, units originally, but this one was painted prototypically. It's a pretty close to scale locomotive, die cast frame, true blast two. This is one of our GP 38 models, Canadian national, really colorful. Again, True Blast 2, they both have, they all have two motors in them, a lot of pulling power, traction tires, operating headlights. This is our Dash 9 locomotive in the um, Norfolk Southern Central Georgia um, scheme, it's heritage locomotives. It was actually down there for this, uh, um, when we just had all these locomotives on display for the first time. It's a little workhorse of a steam engine we have in the 460. This is the B&O version. Again, this is all die cast with boiler and frame on the, and it's got true blast whistle and bell. Um, one thing that's in the catalog that's pretty cool is we have a line of operating cars. This is the uh, guy shoots out boxes. You can operate this two different ways. You can use a standard magnet track uncoupling section, or you can use our remote control. And this can set up to, um, it doesn't require a full command system, but it, this will communicate directly with the car on the track as long as there's power. And you can set it up with, there's little switches on the bottom of each of the, of the cars to um, you press two buttons and you 
can operate it anywhere in your layout. You don't have to be stuck to, to use the uh, magnet track if you don't want to. But it does work with the magnet track as well. You just center it over top of the magnet and it works. We have a couple different versions. We have the box cars I showed and we have the cold dunk car here. And we have log dumps as well. So a, a total of, I believe, four different cars for each. Yeah, and there's four different cars for each type. So we have 12 different um, cars to choose from um, in total. And like I said, they'll operate anywhere when you're layout, like with you when you use the remote control. Um, one of the newer items we came out with this year was some easy street items. This is a Rusty's uh, auto service tow truck. We also did uh, a new Hawaiian shave ice. These should be in stock now at your store, right, Kenny? Uh, should be. Yeah. yeah. And animal those control. Easy, those easy streets always do so well, Larry. Yeah, we have, I believe all the track system is in stock now. It comes in a variety of sections. You have you know, the straight, and we have also the um, turnouts. And I think it's important to, for customers to know that it actually runs on O-scale track and not just the Easy Street system, correct? correct. Yes, it's correct. We have, uh, they're in the catalog, but there's conversion pins. You can actually connect the the um, track right up to Easy Street if you'd like. And that's a good way to model if you have like an urban spur uh, in your layout. You know, a lot of times the tracks come right up to the warehouses in the city and, you know, conventional track doesn't look right if you do that, but you can transition to the Easy Street and go right up to your warehouse again your, on your layout. So um, the one new announcement we made the last uh, NMRA was the egg liner and I can show you let me try to share my screen here um, for we got the engineering drawings for that yeah that that's a new product the egg liner yes um, I'm getting a circle of possibilities right now so let's see Yeah, I'm showing you this. I just got I, um, original engineering drawings. You can see that okay on the screen? Um, hold on. There you go. Okay. There you go. That's that's what it'll look like. Uh, this is, of course, the undecorated version. This is the engineering drawings we get to um, view for the you know, 3D. We can spin it around when we're looking at it and review all angles of it. But this is kind of based on the 027 Streamliner cars. If you have those in stock, still any of those in stock, I know they're not in the catalog right now, but they were very popular for a long time. Um, it's the original, you know, reproductions of the 2400 series um, Lionel cars that was in the golden memory system. So. Very nice. Okay, so. Um, that rounds out my... Uh, presentation for tonight. Uh, I'm glad everybody uh, joined in and I really appreciate you having us tonight and giving us the opportunity to showcase our line. All right. Thank you very much, Larry. Appreciate it. And um, ju just Williams has some great products. We actually just got a restock on a couple of their steam locomotives because we were all sold out. The 70 tonners, uh, the, the Tropicana stuff is just uh, dynamite They're selling very well. So thanks for sharing, Larry. We really appreciate it. Um, so I, I guess that's it for tonight. I want to thank all of you so much. And we could go around the horn and um, uh, give one last uh, saying. And But I, I want to thank everyone so much. And it's really important. And everybody out there, give a shout out to these manufacturers because they're taking the time out and uh you know staying at work either late late tonight or going home and doing it virtually but they're taking the time to be here to sh show their products to talk about their products new upcoming uh past and uh thank you angela trata thomas for this special guest appearance we really appreciate it 
Um, you know, we all as dealers can't do it without the manufacturer support. So it's really important for us. And we really appreciate you guys uh, coming out and being supportive. And um, I'll just go around the horn if anybody has any last thoughts and uh, we'll call it a night. Well, my only thought is that I should have gone with the scotch instead of the beer. But, uh, 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 thank you, uh, everybody. Thank you, Ken, for doing this. Uh, and thank you to all the fans who uh, came in and, and watched. And hopefully you all learned something. And, and uh, hopefully, as much fun as this is, we get to see you all in no person doubt. again. Thanks, Ryan. Time. Have a good night. It's uh, kind of smoky in here. And uh, I don't think I don't think I have to worry about the uh, Walmart greeter job <laughs> or the COVID. The firefighter that's going to save you. <laughs> There's no firefighter here. I, well, well, I told you I Rich, like my smoke uh, machine. Andy, as you could say, I I got uh, Mike as a guest appearance as well. So. I don't know what I'm going to do with this cutout. I, I may have to ship it to you guys uh, as a token of our appreciation. So, <laughs> uh, you, you can keep it. It's all right. We'll, we, we'll save it as a memento. It's all good, man. <laughs> all right. Have go. a good night, Rich. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, Jarrett, Angela, Larry, I thank you guys so much. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. Thank you. We really appreciate it very much. It was a great opportunity for us, and we're, we're really happy to be here. That's great. Well, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. And thank you, everybody who attended. It, it means the bottom of the world to us, and, you know, we didn't have York this year, but hopefully this brought a little taste of York to your home. And uh, thank you to the bottom of our heart. Uh, all the support is totally really appreciative because in times like this COVID situation, I think it's always important for everyone to maintain uh, what the true meaning of this hobby is about. And it's the relationships and uh, the great product and everything uh, that goes along with it. So thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you for the virtual York. We really appreciate it. And take care, everybody. Good night. Good trails. Bye, guys. Good night. <laughs>